Hello everyone, it is me, Mr. Sneak, and today we're going to go over the episode 7 podcast of the Cod Pod. I hope you enjoy it. There was a small technical error you're going to see in the footage where our cameras weren't lined up to the right areas, but you know who we are, Mr. Sneaky, Boss Nasty, and our special guest, Shinchi42. So with all that said, enjoy today's episode of the Cod Pod. Alrighty. Hey, 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 y'all. It is your boy, BN, a.k.a. Mr. Kingdom Builder. We are back. Finally, it has been long overdue. This is episode seven of the Cod Pod, presented by not only myself, but again, our special guest and continuing guest, thankfully. We have our boy, Mr. Sneaky, along with Shinchi42 that is joining us. We have a jam-packed episode where we're pretty much going to be focusing predominantly on the latest update from v1.0.15 I believe it is a brave new world update um, and we're going to go through some of the patch notes we're going to cover it top to bottom uh, there's a lot of insight that we have here and i'm sure a lot of opinions about some of the interesting things that have come out and just as of today as of recording on 420 wink wink we ended up seeing that go live so before we get started Let's go ahead and see how everyone is doing. Sneaky, let's start with you. How have you been doing, our overseas brethren? <laughs> yeah, no, I've been really good, man. Uh, it's been a very jam-packed last couple of weeks just for myself uh, with the free-to-play Road to Glory series. It's been really fun, um, as well as the new patch coming out for the last, I think it was announced eight days ago, seven days ago. Then it's been, you know, it's given us a load of time to actually get towards it. So, yeah, it's been really good. So I can't wait to talk about the patch 1.015 today. It's sweet. Man, I cannot wait. Thanks, Shin. Uh, or I should say Sneak. Shinji, how about you? How uh, how how we've been doing? I know it's been a minute. Uh been doing great. Um I turned thirty one yesterday and um been a lot of fun here. Happy birthday. With yeah, thank you. Been a lot of fun here with the uh season two, honestly. It's a lot of war. So it's been amazing. And excited for these new updates as well. Yeah, man. You've been uh it's interesting you, you mentioned that. So you guys um, I guess I've been in it for, I guess, a little while now. I guess before we really start, how has that been going for you there? Uh, we're just killing it. We're dominating. <laughs> okay. Easy. Okay, Jay. Jay. No. Jay. Was, guys. <laughs> Straight no, flex. No details. I get, I get no fluff, man. He's just all direct <laughs> to the point. So, yo, what are the matchups, though? What was it? King, like, what, you, are you guys allied with another kingdom? How How's that going? Uh, we end up merging. I forgot what server they're in. We end up okay. merging, but we're dominating we're, we're i'm in this like indonesian family nice, okay nice nice fair yeah. okay fair. okay cool i'm gonna have to come and take a look when i can i've been i've been so busy with uh with mm -hmm. she's with our kingdom project i honestly it's been stoking up so much time i'm getting pinged probably even as as we go but ah uh, no that's awesome i'm glad you're having a good time okay let's dive in so if we can let us start with uh, so we're going to use a couple ways. We're going to start off with your favorite part, your favorite one thing of the patch thus far. We'll talk about, and then we'll ask you what your least favorite or your questionable is. And then we'll dive in and we'll talk a little bit about some of our more miscellaneous picks, right? So uh, again, we'll go left to right here um, and I'll round it. So we'll go Sneak, Sint, Shinchi, and then I'll round out. So Sneak, let's start with you, big guy. What is, what's your one favorite part of the patch? Thus far, if you had to just pick one thing you love above everything else, what is it and why? The behavior of controls. I have to. Oh. It's been so we've been able to test it already on, on our server and it's been so good um, that they've put this in now because before the way behemoths worked, if anyone tried them, it was simply just you you summoned the behemoth, uh, you clicked either like your flag or the enemy flag and it, you basically sent the behemoth to attack or defend and the behemoth generally just did whatever it wanted to do, you know, you could easily, you know, torn it away and pull it away, which is a bit of a nuisance, but again, kind of a really cool mechanic. But now, which is really good, is the Beastmaster title allows you to fully control the behemoth, and it's like you are controlling it as if you were controlling like a legion on the march, like on the open field. So it's really cool that the fact that you can 
be dragging this thing in the located like war zone area and you could just like be fighting someone like almost get the skill cycling charged up and then you could target someone else to maybe like charge them down with the giant bear for example so i've been really loving the bear uh, the bear controls and the behemoth controls they've added into the game so i can't wait for them to maybe add some more quality of life um, parts in that direction of of the behemoths okay okay no nice yeah i know you i know you i think i saw you write something in one of the chats about uh being able to have an indicator for when the skill or the rage had accumulated so that way you could activate it similar to an artifact on a hero i wasn't sure if that was the exact yeah. direction you were going in but that's how it sounded from what i read yeah exactly it basically okay. that's the only thing missing really for most players when they start trying it out i think Chin Chin, if he's if he's tried it out as well he, he'll probably agree that like the behemoth mm -hmm. thing's really good. You just need that 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 skill meter on the side of the behemoth just to allow again the beast master to know when his major like ultimate skills are firing off. So then he can hit the right targets and move it accordingly. So it'd be a really good feature to add. Awesome. Okay. Okay. No, man. I, I definitely. Uh, I actually think it makes a lot of sense, uh, especially if you're looking to have a little bit more individual control and customization especially to something like that which i mean let's be honest man i mean that's pretty next level to be able to summon a a big pet if you will <laughs> onto, the, onto the field and uh you know write it like gandalf on the griffins uh if you will from lotr so okay awesome love it all right Chinchi, you are up next good sir how about your favorite pick from the update i think my favorite pick for the update it has to be from the vip store um gotta be that uh reserve legions you can also get them from buying the bundle from the march of conquerors if you max it out you can get up to the level five reserve which is allowing you to do 20k uh, just saves a lot of time for making a lot of units um for competing here in the events now um another thing is the bakshi also coming out in the gold chest is also pretty cool i know they had it before they removed it they brought it back again and then for the behemoths, though, I'm kind of reserved on to that. Um, I like the idea of having the Beastmaster, but the summoning function, I think, limits the whole alliance. Because if the Beastmaster and the leader is offline, it, yeah. you know, you cannot summon it. So you're in trouble. Um, both person needs to be online to really um, succeed in the war, in my opinion. But in your retrospect to what you said, I haven't tried it yet. And I just messaged our leader and I said, I need to get the Beastmaster role. And so that I can try and test it out and see how it works. All right. Uh, yeah, don't worry. There's going to be a, there's going to be a celebrity uh, pop-ins every once in a while for my kiddo. So, you know, I just, I let it play out the way it is. I love that though. Um, man, it, it, it is. I, I and I, I do like the way to your point, the way they did that, where, um, and it's interesting because they also added that cooldown, right, for the timers on the titles. 15 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, 15 right? 15 minutes, yeah. And it, I was having a conversation with some people from uh, from my kingdom about it. We were just in a lounge chat one day, and some of them were, spec were wondering, you know, hey, did they put this in so that way, you know, you couldn't kind of either just rotate titles as quickly, or did they do it so that way, you know, like if someone left an alliance and tried to come over or something or did they do it so that way they couldn't you know just constantly keep cycling out the inactives or if someone was offline so it, it, it is interesting i don't know what your guys' take is on that for i think it's unnecessary <laughs> yeah right yeah. it's, it's just... unnecessary it's something that is not needed i think it's unnecessary. i think Two in things. their head i think they had an idea kind of what you were saying where maybe like putting it down to a 15 minute cooldown was there to try and make I don't know, the officer's role feel a bit more appreciated that, like, it's not something you just take and get rid of. But <laughs> at the same time, like, it's kind of like, that's how this game's kind of been built. Even, like, Rise of Kingdoms, everyone knows, and most kingdom builders, like, officers that do get buffs, you do generally just rotate them around really fast just to, to get the quick buff if you're going to use it. So it's kind of unnecessary having that cooldown, so I kind of agree with that okay okay all right uh maybe we'll have to ask some people in the audience if they uh, feel the same way or not or if they have a different viewpoint maybe we'll um, we'll definitely circle back okay 
I guess it's on me now. So a lot of pressure here because you guys basically took all the good ones. No, <laughs> but uh, so for me, uh, honestly, I I'm, I'm going to be honest. There are multiple I could choose here. Uh, but again, I know we're probably going to talk about more of these um, as well once we get to the end. But uh, if I had to choose one to start, I'm going to go with the I'm going to go with the core fortress change. Ooh. Uh, I really like the direction they're going with the game because I think the core fortress change to me is, is so I don't know if you remember this sneaky. So um, our boy Chad Thundersea, uh, AKA Steelheart now on, on the COD discord as a mod, he, we understand he had to yeah. change his name respectfully. Um, he was a big advocate for this. If you remember, he was, he posted this in gen chat back when there was like what a thousand uh, members or so or something around that give or take. And he was a big advocate for ba- ba- He was one of the first people I, I saw that was really pushing having CFs be limited to your affiliated region where you couldn't build them anywhere else. Like it was just that. And then everything beyond that was basically just your alliance for it. So if you wanted to build an adjacent or beyond your affiliated or into zone two and zone three, as it has been now for a while, since at least the last or second to last update uh, that had that in it, I should say, uh, I like this change. I like the fact that as it reads, adjusted rules for building core uh, alliance core fortresses, alliance core fortresses must be built in an alliance's affiliated region, i.e., as an example, the region where the leader city is located, which is their starting slash affiliated region. So I love the fact, I'm actually in favor of this. I really like how they limit it there because now it's not something where we've seen this happen. We saw this happen in Server 2, as you did as well, right, where they basically were just region hopping. We've seen this in other kingdoms as well. Um, we see this pretty much done in merge kingdoms, right? We saw this in SS1-1 as they went to SS1-2 for the second season where they just basically were hopping fast uh, and g- capping a pass, placing the CF at the next pass, building it, cap, and then rinse and repeat and going all the way. So I like how this to me feels like they're they're trying to not only slow the game down a little bit, but they're trying to make it a little more strategic, a little more tactical. They want it to be something that's more of a group effort. And that, I think, has been a trend we've seen with a lot of the update, a lot of the pieces of the updates, right, that they've been coming out with. And I think this is just another one of those, right? Because if you want to be able to now get somewhere, you have to have a lot of people online if you want to build those flags fast and you have enough resource or in storehouse capacity to support flagging out all the way. Um, but I think it also limits it. So because it also, on the other end, doesn't allow for alliances to just easy region hop from pass to pass and just wreck everyone's face. Like I just, I just like how it limits that extreme uh, and kind of reigns it in a bit, but it also stays in line with the direction that the game is going and what we've been hearing from the developers. So for me, that that's my number one. I don't know if you guys feel the same way. I, I guess out of curiosity, sneak your thoughts and, and then Shinshi on that. Um, I, I, I kind of like it, but I don't, um, the thing is with the core fortress thing, I understand like that maybe the the thought of having that core fortress as like the home region to make it kind of like that's the way you, your starting point is. But I know like maybe a lot of people, or maybe I'm I'm wrong, but I think a lot of people would have actually preferred the the how it were how it used to be. Because the cool thing was it was like you still needed a load of players online to be able to like core drop close enough to the like next pass to build up and then it was allowing you to actually like close out areas and make safe zones almost so it was like a really it was still like long drawn out fights but it was like really fast paced like you know you you didn't have to fight across an entire region you was fighting like two major war zones and that was it um so it kept like i think people like happy because of that but i don't know i might might be wrong maybe people people dislike it you know i thought it was all right um i was happy that the fact that core fortresses could only be summoned in zone one only now that was good um i thought it made sense um to stop people just like hopping into zone two and doing crazy stuff in zone two and three mids so um yeah, I, I don't know. That's how my... You can see I'm kind of on the fence of it. I like it, but I don't like You're it. Good. Yeah, so it's a bit of a weird one for me. I wonder how Shinji feels about it. Honestly, for me, I'm going to be honest that, you know, 
Um, since I am not the one dropping the territories in here, I haven't really been paying <laughs> attention to that very much. But I'm looking at the map for us. It seems pretty much similar to... Um, isn't it pretty similar to what Rock is doing anyway? To where you can move your uh, fortress anyway? Because I'm looking at my positions in here with our buildings. No, so it's like... The, what, the way it's going now, so you look like in, I don't know if it's technically implemented right in this instance, but generally the way it's meant to be moving forward now is your core fortress. So example, mm -hmm. like say you started in Sephrostia or Kaltea. Mm -hmm. If you're making your alliance there, your core fortress can only be used now in Kaltea. So you won't be able to yeah. use it to like invade into a new area. So say you went and for in Sophrostia, you wouldn't be able to drop your core fortress there anymore. It's it's literally oh, dedicated. Like it's almost like the root. You know, imagine you're in a tree. Yeah. It's like the actual root of your alliance, and then a fortress two and three allows you to then, if you want to invade zone one, you can. But you're mm -hmm. gonna need to use fortress two, not your core yeah. fortress. So. Okay. Yeah, because I think for us, I guess this is before our update because I'm seeing my yeah, core yeah. fortress in the vault in a different province, basically. Yeah. Hmm, interesting. Yeah. yeah. But isn't how about the um? And I'm gonna tie up the topic here with the yeah. core fortress and as well as the joining other alliance that they're um the adjustment on the update. Um, you know, I think people are having issue with the resurgence, so I think now they're just gonna allow people to join alliance in the early stage so yeah. if you're talking about like hopping can't people just hop alliance to move into different regions now yeah so that's the yeah, thing, like the thing like the fixed yeah so it seems like so what they've done so they've stopped basically in an alliance from using this the core fortress to city hop across for like battlefield mm -hmm. purposes right so you couldn't now for example like now you might have been able to just before the patch like you could be in Novula and say using war, you could go to the Darolan Pass, take the pass, right? And then you could drop your core fortress in the next Darolan Pass, but that's at the Forgotten Lands. So you, you could mm -hmm. push them all the way to the Forgotten Lands with just one core four drop. So they've stopped that, but I think that's what the change is aimed for. Um, with the resurgence thing, makes sense though. I really do like what they've done because obviously... Like, you know, like, many people know the amount of players that have had issues joining alliances, right? Because people join alliances and you want to join your friends, but when you first install the game, it doesn't give you the option. It just, like, slams you into a, a random starting region and go ahead. So it, it's good that they've moved the whole resurgence mechanic right at the start of the game because it doesn't impact you at the start right because you're not you haven't got any policies you haven't got any troops you're only at like a thousand power so it makes mm -hmm. sense that they've moved it from you know i think it was like the sixth stage in all, um all the way to the first stage so it's a really good uh bring up there with shinji about the resurgence I forgot about that <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. yeah and i i think so um i think it pops on the eighth auger stone chapter for a research but uh with I think to your point, though, Sneak, is that the interesting thing for me uh, on the resurgence is that when you go into season two, you it, it's the first Augerstone chapter, right? So it pops immediately. Yeah. And the interesting part is, I wonder if they're still going to keep in though, right? For, based on what you're saying, are they going to steep? Are they going to still keep in the uh, uh, relocation item, right? So you have your you have your region relocation item. I imagine they're still going to keep that in because there wasn't a note about taking it out. So to me. By them adding in resurgence on the, now the first chapter, what that to me says is okay. Well, most likely players are going to hit Castle Twelve before the eighth Augerstone chapter. So uh, it, it's like it's like, it's almost like they're just giving them a backup right before it hits there. So if they still have the region relocation item, and you can still use that, of course, but now they're still giving you an option once you hit Twelve to still be able to relocate. So, I mean, I, but overall, I like that. I think it is a good change because it still gives people options early on where they don't feel like they're strapped to have to wait all that time to end up hitting that Og chapter for Resurgence to pop. 
Yeah, man, that's, that's, we... that's what I think. I was just, sorry. Sorry, I was just saying that. That's, that's, I was going to say I agree with you what you were saying there. Um, I didn't know if Shinji wanted to quickly summarize anything to do with the patch, what we might I'm just going to be like... I'm just gonna be like a bitter man. I'm like, I agree to disagree. I'm like, I need to suffer how, people need to suffer how other people suffered in the very beginning. <laughs> Why did yeah, people yeah. get an easy pass now? Yeah, you guys right? need to learn the yeah. lesson the hard way. <laughs> isn't that how it all, isn't that how it always is in the beta, dude? I remember just to take it to a side note, right? For those of us that played Infinity Kingdom for a little bit, right? In the beta, uh, the Capitol buildings. At one point, which are basically like the holy sites in Rock, right? The Capitol buildings at one point gave you research, building speed up, and a ton of gold. Uh, and then once they went to global, they immediately re uh, removed all of that. They removed the research speed. They removed the building speed. They removed all the gold income that you were getting for your alliance that you could basically claim for all the players that were there. And it was just like the biggest nerf. But I guess to my point is... It feels like that's something that we typically see as a trend, right? You'll see them testing things out, and it might start off really, really well, and it might look great, but then, you know, all of a sudden they're making changes that are either taking things away or adjusting things completely, right, to go in a kind of a different direction. So, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely with you there. Okay, uh, next one. Now I want to hear from both of you. What is the one change you're just iffy about either iffy it's maybe hitting you the wrong way maybe you're just not in favor of it or it's just very questionable to you so sneak let's start with you uh the only thing i could say that we've missed out realistically on the patch was the the server migration thing just because mm -hmm. i have gone on my main account and checked it out the cool thing they've done is if you if you go to any of the older accounts now anyway it does say like server four so it, it like ties my profile to my original server which is cool and then when it comes to division then it doesn't show you like a division in regards to like seed a seed b seed c at the moment what it's showing you in our server is our division is servers one, two, three, four, five, and six. So it's saying I'm some somewhat able to migrate from server four to server six, but I don't know if that's just because they've only Th this put is for in, the merge kingdoms. Yeah, yeah, about the merge and a migration system because you can see like they've put the division system in. You can see they've got like the migration systems like in place, but you can't migrate like it will give you the option to so um it's a bit of a weird one in that patch i guess um hopefully we get to see what what that does you know we're already going to see i think they've maybe just put in the base foundation ready for obviously because yeah. people was wondering are they going to bring migration i did not and then now they now they have kind of you can see it's there so maybe they just got the the footing in ready and then they're going to refine it later for for actually migration purposes. So I don't know if Shin Chi thinks uh, is seeing the migration side of it at all, but um, so hopefully we can clean up. Then. I'm seeing the server 14 and then SS1-004 for me. Um, isn't the update basically I can only migrate to the division that I'm in? Yeah, but that's the thing. What we do, I don't understand because it's. We we assumed when it says division, we would assume like you know like maybe your kingdom is in um, like division one because of the power rating of the kingdom. Yeah, but it appears like in, it's merge. Yeah, in, instead it's more like I can migrate to server six out of one, two, three, four, five, and six. But I don't know if that's because they've only just implemented it or not like i do have this like on video coming out so maybe like you could just check it out in the future and you might be able to have a bit maybe a better grasp but it's a bit of a weird one that you can't migrate and the division does aim at the moment like power based so i don't know where they're going with it so yeah that's where, why i understand where, as well yeah oh, where's sorry. the access for though snake so if you if you log if in, i'm in game if you zoom, literally like if you go into oh, your boss nasty out. one on yeah, sorry, super server yeah. one right and then if you just click on your profile and oh, then... dang, that's why dude yeah i re-logged re back into my main account that's 
Yes. See it? I thought I thought I was getting back into the into my merge account. So okay, if you log into that. your main account back on like Super Server One, uh, you'll yeah. see on your profile now. Um, when you click on the banner, it'll pop out, and then you'll see your server, which is really cool. Like I say, so I could see server four. So yeah. for you, it should show hopefully server two, if I remember rightly. Um, but then to the right, you'll see your division, and it says SS-0000. And then when you click into that division, it goes into server one, two, three, four, five, and six. So again, I don't know what their plan is with that migration plan maybe like i said they've just implemented it in just to get it there so everyone's like okay they are bringing migration in maybe they just need to refine it still you know maybe in the future we'll see that like plan out but that's the only thing i'm a bit uncertain of really i i want to i want to bring up something here i i do want them to only limit the migration within the division for now I don't want them to open it up because when they start opening it up, then we can start seeing super servers like what we've seen in Rise of Kingdoms. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because I'm sure mm -hmm. as well in the patch it does state as well with the migration, like you're gonna have a certain amount of places per kingdom as well. So it's not like yeah. every single whale can flood into one kingdom. It'd be like maybe thirty, forty members max. So if you've got ten whales trying to get in and only three get in, then it's kind of tough luck you know you missed your place but maybe mm -hmm. in the future again they might implement a way f to manage that like i know bn's always kind of gone for advocate of being able to maybe if you was the king of the call of dragons zone you was able to accept or deny new you know migrants into your kingdom right like so it'd be really cool maybe in the future if they're going to be able to do that Maybe they've had to reset Rise of Kingdoms into Call of the Dragons to do it. So we'll soon mm -hmm. see in the future, hopefully. Yeah, man. I'm a, I am mean, I'll say this. I, I mean, to Shinji's point, I, I'm a big advocate for... Uh, I, listen, I don't want to go down my TED Talk rabbit hole too much when it comes to kingdom management. You guys know my passion for that. But I will say this. I, I'm very much of the belief that when you look at the kingdom builder genre in general, there is rarely any care or quality of life attention to actual like kingdom optimization when it comes to giving you tools, um, utilities, and ways to just do things better, right? Like something I've mentioned before is, you know, why can't they generate a report that the king gets as an example in Rock that shows you um, how many people logged in at least one time uh, in 24 hours? Why can't they show you um, how many people logged in one time across three days, across seven days, right? Why can't they show you, why can't you get some type of kingdom-wide activity report that shows you that and shows you people that haven't logged in in the past three days, in the past five days, in the past seven days, right? Like things like that, where they're really trying to treat the game and the kingdom you're in it, as as if you were running your own country, right like those are kind of you know like census type reports like those are that's a very simple thing but it can give you such great insight into how your kingdom's doing and again i'm not going to go down you know too far with what i would consider to be my amazing brilliant ideas because they are awesome let's just not get it. but <laughs> i'm going to say this to shinji's point specifically is on the migration i 100% like i am 100% in belief that that th they either have to go one of two ways. They're either going to have to go with some type of universal common denominator system that is fair across the board, right? Because remember, they don't have king tools. There's no anything. There's no king or queen thing. Now, they could do something like that with the dragon. It's not like they couldn't. I'm sure maybe it has been a thought. But mm -hmm. if you don't do that, then you have to have something that's uniform, that's fair for everyone, that's consistent across the board. Um, because at that point... The only other way they could do it is you'd have to allow people to come in, like, I mean, even if they're coming in at a certain criteria or a certain threshold, right, they still would be, it's, it's, it's in the player's control, right? And in my opinion, I just don't believe that should be the case. I think that's the worst thing they could do. Uh, the way I've always viewed it, like, Shinji, you might remember this, right, because you've played Rock for a while. Do you remember when they did this trial test in Rock where they, um, uh, where a server announcement went out? To everyone oh, in the kingdom, yeah, yeah, yeah. when a new migrant joined, it was only for yeah. a short period. Okay, so you remember this? Mm -hmm. um, at the time, I thought the idea was great, but the execution was poor. 
It shouldn't have gone out to everyone. Only the king should have got notified of when someone joined, but also more importantly, they should be notified when someone leaves, when someone migrates out of the kingdom. So you get the income. It's the same thing as like, if you're migrating to, um, if you're trying to immigrate to a new country, right? Like you get, like, I'm sure the government or some, some department probably gets notified of, you know, hey, this person got approved. There's one more that came in. They keep numbers on how many immigrants came in, how many people um, left, right? I mean, again, I'm, these are just basic things to me. So to make a long story short, uh, I, I would love for them to do something, in my opinion, where they have it be in the kingdom's control, not necessarily the player's control. Uh, and I'm not saying they couldn't make something work. I'm just saying my belief is that I think it's there's more value, there's less margin of error if you do it in the kingdom, and they should be able to approve or deny every single person that comes in. There should be no, you can just go there. Like, everyone should have to apply. And what it should also do is it should show you a history how many kingdoms has that person played in? How long were they in their previous kingdom before they applied to your kingdom? Uh, what's their current power? What's their breakdown of kills? Like, it should almost be like a resume, right? Like, players should have a rap sheet, right? And I, I mean that in a good way, not in a bad way, but you should have some type of a rap sheet that, uh, you, that, that the king or the queen can see when they're coming in, and then you should be able to approve or deny it, whether it's one person that has it or if they do some type of, like, it needs a two out of three approval or whatever, right? I mean, I still would like for it just to be very simple and have one person, but that's my belief on at least a part of the migration system. I don't know how you guys feel about that, but mm. I, I just feel very sure about that stuff. Yeah, being realistic into this, just thinking about what would devs do in their perspective is that, you know, I, I, I heard your idea and I've heard it from other people also. Um, but with that type of idea, you limit many people as well, and you're giving too much power to, you know, certain individuals in the game to uh, moderate the server. And I think in a developer's perspective, they probably want more of a free, uh, free freedom, free will within the game. And this is this is why also we don't see this type of, um, what is this thing called? Uh, actions that they, you know, actions in rise of kingdoms as well and i don't think they could ever implement it either i mean i could be wrong but that's just you know i for me i don't really give a give a damn because i'm not the leader i'm not going <laughs> to handle all that load but i just i'm just thinking like in a developer's yeah. perspective they're not going to allow this too much power for one single player to dominate the whole server because you know yeah. you can have a bad leader have a bad judgment and it, it could it could go wrong Exactly. Yeah. No. Before we go down that rabbit hole, because maybe we, we might save that topic to be fair for maybe next episode. It might be a really good episode to talk about things like that, because it could mm -hmm. we could easily go down hours and hours on end. Oh yeah, yeah Especially yeah. <laughs> talking about kingdom management when it goes to, you know, being able to just like like you say, um, being able to approve people, not approve people. You know, how could you be able to maybe give players some sort of tools to improve the kingdom experience like we could easily talk about that so um i think we've done everything we need to do though today if i'm not gonna lie i think we smashed out patch 1.015 really well i don't know about you guys um yep. um so i was just gonna say i'll pass it over to you bn if you want to do the nice little uh, closing it outro see where everyone was going to be able to catch you where we're going to catch everyone else and, and go on all righty this one was short um, it hurts my soul because it's always a good conversation with you fellas. And, uh, but I understand. So, uh, again, I am going to be the uh, kind Boy Scout and uh, go ahead and follow suit. So, uh, as always, um, again, as we start to round out, um, uh, bear in mind, or I should say just keep in mind, that for anyone out there who is ever interested, right, we always try and do our episodes live. I know at least for the time being, I know we've been doing them uh, on my Discord, but as always, right, and we'll get to Sneaky and Shinchi where you can find them in a bit, but you're always more than welcome, right? Again, we like to do these as kind of just a way, and who knows, maybe we'll just kind of rotate servers that we do them in. Um, but again, I'm always happy to host, um, and uh, just know that... Uh, they come to me, you know, I don't force anyone. So, uh, but anyways, with that being said, uh, again, we appreciate everyone who comes to tune in. Uh, we love being able to give you guys kind of a first, I guess, look, listen uh, before the video comes up. And, you know, I know there's always opportunities to interact with the audience as well. So again, we appreciate those of you guys who end up checking us out, um, especially before uh, we do end up uh, uploading those to our channel. So let's round this bad boy out. Sneaky, uh, what do you got going on? Where can the people find you? Yeah, man. So if you're free to play and you're looking for a series, I've 
been smashing out a Road to Glory series purely free to play on the new Server 65 with Mr. BN here and his project. It's been really fun as well. So I've been giving you guys all the tips that you need to know. So if you want to check that out, I am on YouTube. Mr. Sneaky is the way to find me. Um, I've also got Twitter that you can do again, Mr. Sneaky. I believe it's 94 at the end though. So all the socials and stuff that is pasted around my uh, YouTube main channel. So yeah, if you want to find me, tune in. I live stream. I do everything you need and we have a load of fun. So yeah, that's where you can find me at. Awesome. Shinchi, where can we find yeah. you? Uh, you guys can find me, of course, on YouTube. Uh, you can also find me on TikTok, you know, um, creating guides for Call of Dragons kind of just all around. And also, if you like war, we're having a lot of war in our server right now. We're dominating. So if you want to see people get smashed into pieces, then check out our live stream. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. I've zeroed so many so far. I awesome. <laughs> don't feel bad. Yo, I don't feel yo. bad. Sh Shinshi the warlord. Yeah, just going, going in. Uh, all right. I've looted you know. like 20 million recently. Uh, just... <laughs> <laughs> what is this guy, man? Oh, I'm done. Uh, all right. I guess I have to round out. Uh, I'm again. I'm pretty simple. You know, all all my stuff is pretty much on YouTube, so you guys can find me at Boss Nasty on there. Uh, Googling is always uh, an easy way too. Um, and yeah, that's it. Again, man, I hope you guys enjoy. Thank you as always for your time. We appreciate those that watch, and this is fun, man. I'm hoping we can continue for a lot more episodes. I know we've been talking about maybe bringing some more guests on as well. So we definitely will be looking to all of the above. But we appreciate. Uh, again, I should say I appreciate Sneaky and Shinji's time. And uh, again, that's going to do it for us. So as always, man, until next time, we will catch you later. And